I, I'm sure some of you have asked this question before. How important is the consistency attribute in the game? How do we improve it? And ultimately, should you even care about it? On today's show, I'll answer all those questions. My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. This is the channel where you find me doing content on the Game Football Manager. I also stream three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on another channel called Daljit's Moments. On Tuesdays, sometimes Fridays and Saturdays, I do draft mode over on Twitch. And you're more than welcome to join me there. But first, let's go talk about consistency. And there's one player that springs to mind every time I think of inconsistent performances. There are so many players in modern football who are famously inconsistent. We've got Sam Rinaze, Mesut Ozil. But there's one player that springs to my mind. It was the Inter Milan striker Adriano. Now, he, at his peak, he was one of the best strikers in the world. Um, he, could, he would be capable of scoring a goal a game. And then the next season, uh, he would pick up the title of the worst player in the league. Um, he struggled. Like some games, he was brilliant. And other games, he was just nowhere to be found. And this attribute is something that SI have tried to incorporate into the game. And they call this attribute the consistency attribute. Like any other attribute in the game, it scales from 1 to 20. There are several ways this could be described in the game and will come out through your coaching reports. A player could be described as very inconsistent or he could be very consistent. And the attribute values will be different based on the description of the player. A player who is... 10 or 11 in terms of consistency, the coaches won't say anything about him. You probably won't even know whether he's consistent or not. But should we be concerned about consistency as an attribute? Consistency is an attribute that affects how a player plays during the course of a game. It only affects mental and technical attributes and does not in any way affect physical attributes. To understand the impact of consistency, we need to introduce something called current ability. I'm sure you guys understand what current ability is. Current ability is basically a snapshot of a player's attributes. They aggregate it and they tell you how good the player is. Now, the thing about this game is no player ever plays at 100% of his current ability. So you might have a player who's got 140 current ability. He never plays at 140 because things like consistency affect the real current ability that happens in the game. Because if you don't have some kind of a modifier, then you would see games where a player is getting 6.8 in average ratings all the way. There's hardly any change to his performances. So for example, a player with a consistency of 1, when you roll this uh, consistency into his uh, performances, then he could be playing 1 out of 25 games at his current ability. His consistency isn't that big of an issue. Now, let me give you another example. Take a player with 100 current ability all right now if he has one consistency his average real ca will probably be around 90.4 now you take the same 100 ca player give him 20 consistency and his average ca will probably be closer to 98 ca the difference between both players is barely eight attribute points loosely translated this is less than a point drop in his attributes because of the marginal impact to current ability People shouldn't be so fixated by consistency. What you really need to understand is that consistency for a player, it improves through the course of his career. If you go down to the SI forums, you'll find plenty of discussions on consistency. You'll find threads. You'll find input from some of the developers who have jumped in and offered their insight as well. So if you have more questions, I'd recommend going to the SI forums and jumping into one of these discussions. When it comes to using players in a game, you should be more concerned about how the attributes are distributed for the role that you want him to play in. Consistency in itself is only going to affect the mental and technical attributes of that player, which is one of the reasons why physical attributes are so overrated in the game. You know that a player is consistently going to perform physically in the game. So if you're looking at a player and you understand how his attributes are distributed, that marginal impact that consistency have can easily be handled. This chart is very interesting. It's probably one of the biggest reasons why I'm not so fixated about consistency. 70% of players begin with a range between 9 to 16. 
that is actually a sweet spot to be in in the game. Now, if 70% of the players are already in this range, and if you manage to recruit players with a certain consistency rating, then you shouldn't have too many issues in the game. When it comes to consistency, I'm only worried about players who are described as very inconsistent or inconsistent. Other players, not so. Let's take a look at some of these players. Now, what we want to do is understand their average ratings. because This has been taken over the course of a season. Now, as you can see, uh, the average rating is 7.28. Consistency is high. Here, we've got a player who's considered to be um, fairly consistent. His uh, attribute is 14. His average rating is 7.21. Now, if we go down the list, you'll find that quite a, there are quite a number of players who are in that zone. But here, we've got a player. In the game, this will be described as consistent. Um, his average rating is 6.88 over 12 appearances. A player who is 6.88 in the game is considered to be having a good performance. Not a great performance. 7.37 will be considered a great performance. 6.88 is like meeting expectations. And then if we go down the list again, you'll find that most of the players are performing okay if, when they have a decent consistency uh, value. Here we've got another player who in the game will be described as fairly consistent at 7.10. Then if you it's going to find it really difficult to find players who are performing poorly. Now we have got a player. This is 10. In the game, when you go and check this player out, um, there won't be anything to describe his consistency. You'll just have no description. But he played 27 games, 6.92 for, for performances. This is considered to be a good performance on par with some of the other players who are close to having higher attributes or consistency. Now if we keep going down, we'll find another player, David Luiz, who's got... A, Eight. Now, 8 will be fairly inconsistent, but 6.97 average rating for the course of a season. And then we'll find another one here, 12, 6.98. 12 is going to be considered to be fairly consistent. Should we be concerned about the consistency attribute in the game? Frankly speaking, if your tactic is bad, a consistent player is not going to make it any better. So, what you really need to worry about first is your tactic, whether your tactic is well designed. Secondly, when you're looking at a player and you've chosen him to play a specific role, he needs those attributes for that role. Finally, if you have a player who's inconsistent, what you have to worry about is the fact that in some there will be some games he'll perform well and there'll be other games he doesn't perform so well. So do you play him in every single game? Of course not. I, I wouldn't play an inconsistent player in every single game. I will probably bring him off the bench. I'll probably rotate him with the other players. And chances are, you will find that his performances are much better in that regard. So if you play him in every single game, there's a higher possibility, it's because it's just pure math, that he's going to give you streaky performances across the season. I do understand there is a desire for people to see that consistency attribute improve. So how does that happen in the game of football manager? Let's make one thing clear. It doesn't happen through mentoring. Consistency is not affected by mentoring in the game of football manager. Mentoring affects attributes like ambition, determination, and professionalism. Over the course of a career, a player's attributes are going to improve. When those attributes improve, along with the hidden attributes that have also been mentored, what you will see is a player, you know, having better distribution in his attributes. Now, this makes the player play better on the pitch. However, mentoring itself doesn't directly impact consistency because consistency improves over time naturally in the game. It is one of those slow burning attributes, right? It takes a really long time to improve. A player generally gains consistency as he grows older. However, if you are hoping to see a player who is very inconsistent and who is already 20 plus years old become consistent, which can be an attribute jump of at least eight points, that ain't happening. <laughs> I doubt if it's going to happen. So it's easier for fairly consistent players to become consistent over the course of a career. However, if you have a very inconsistent player, his attribute could be three or four. There's a strong possibility that if he does improve, it's going to be no more than four attribute points in seven years. It takes a really long time for the consistency attribute to actually go up. So how do you actually make it go up? There's something that you have to be very careful of, something I love to do and you shouldn't be doing it. I learned this lesson in FM19. See, the thing about me is that I love changing tactics, right? 
So I used to play different tactics every month. And it wasn't so good in my AC Milan Twitch stream, if you guys remember. Diego Almada and Niccolo Mafia were becoming inconsistent because we kept changing formations. It's only when I settled on a formation did we see Niccolo Mafia become a superb you know, balloon Dior player because he was starting to bang in all the goals and his consistency started to improve. But it took us close to four to five seasons for that to happen. So what you need to do in your games is to ensure that you're consistent with your formations as well and where you play the player. So if you are pairing him with the, the same kind of strike force, then you want to be looking at the same kind of partnerships as well. And in your, in your defense, when you, if you keep chopping and changing your defenders, you're being inconsistent with your selection. This can affect your defenders as well. So whenever they are young, you want to make sure that your plan is a consistent, cohesive plan. You want to be bringing them on when you're leading, when they're young, so that they don't encounter yo-yo performances, which can also roll into poor attribute development and inconsistency for, that, for their attributes. So you want to be very, very careful with how you use your players. So what I like to do in the game is to make sure that there isn't a big divergence between average rating here and last five games. When you start seeing that their last five games is a lot lower than their average rating, it means that the player is, uh, his performances are declining. So when that happens, you want to go to your players and you want to go and discuss and warn the player about their recent form. Now, this can really help with inconsistency because what you want to do is you want to be on the ball with their performances. So if they start giving you poor performances, you want to warn the player about their performances as well. Now we come to what I call the tightrope. This is easily the most annoying thing to handle in the game, right? I know a lot of you out there hate it. I hate it too. It's called player unhappiness. Players that are unhappy generally will give you inconsistent performances. And it's going to be a challenge for you to pick and choose which players are going to be unhappy and which players are going to be happy. You can't keep everybody in the club happy. So I wouldn't be too worried about player unhappiness unless these are players who are important for your tactic. I've got a player in my club called Jonathan Ta. Jonathan Ta is one of the better defenders in the club. He has got a fairly sporting personality. Uh, his determination is only 10. However, we managed to keep him happy for the entire season. There were no contract demands from the player and his performances were very consistent at 7.39. When he comes in as a player who is considered to be fairly consistent, which puts him in that 12 to 13 bracket in terms of the consistency attribute itself. So when it comes to player happiness, you need to zero in on who the important players are at your club so that you can identify these players, get consistent performances out of them, use them consistently, and of course, keep them happy. So if you wanted to improve the consistency attribute in the game, you got to do well. You got to consistently use the player. You got to make sure your formation is a consistent one. You don't chop and change too much. And you got to keep your squad happy. Is it worth the effort? <laughs> Honestly, I don't think it is. At the end of the day, it's way too much work. Consistency as an attribute should only matter to people who are playing draft mode competitions. If you're doing a long-term save, should you be bothered about consistency as an attribute? No. I mean, it's easy to get rid of the players. You want to worry about training those attributes? This is going to take you seven years, four to seven years at least for attributes to go up by at least about three points. In fact, they take a really long time to grow. So, oh, should I worry about consistency as an attribute? I mean, there are ways to get it up. I mean, if you want to improve the attribute, I've already explained all the ways you can improve the attribute. However, that's a lot of work for a few attribute points, right? So the easiest way actually is to just accept fairly consistent as the benchmark for the whole team. And then making sure that you don't sign any player who's got an attribute level of 10 or below. That's it. And if you have players with a consistency attribute of 10 or the, the coaches come to you and they don't give you a label, then you know that that player's at 10. You don't want to sign too many players who don't have that label. You want to know that it's higher. It makes the game a lot more easier because players' consistency will improve over time, right? So 10 is a nice place to be at if you wanted to sign a young player 
And least you know that over the course of his career in seven years, he could go up to about 13. That's great. But if you play, if you sign a player who's got very inconsistent as an attribute, right? And it's like three or four, uh, 10 years, man. <laughs> Before it might even go up by three or four. Is that something I want to do in the game? No. While we're talking about consistency, you might be wondering about the big match attribute. You want to know how it can be improved, right? You want to see a player relishing the big match. So how does that improve in the game? You got to win more cup competitions. So once you start winning more cup competitions, especially when they're young, they start relishing big matches. And that's how that attribute goes up. Once again, I want to thank the person who asked me this question on Discord. It got me thinking. It made sense that I would do a video on it. I hope I answered your questions and you found it useful. If you have any more questions on the Game Football Manager, please drop me a note below. Once again, thank you for your support. Take care of each other. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.